Do the Gospels portray Jesus as God? Yes. That's all for this video. Thank you all for watching and God bless. Wait, was that the intro that just played? I thought I ended the video. Well, all right, I guess I'll give you a full explanation. But before I do that, this video is part of a series I am doing on Christian apologetics. So if you've not seen the previous videos, please check those out before continuing with this one. Also, if you like this video and you want to see more, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it. Now that we have that out of the way, let's move on to the first question. Do the Gospels portray Jesus as God? Well, let's start by looking at the Gospel of John, in which Jesus' divinity is the most obvious. Right away from the beginning, John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, John identifies a person known as the Word, or the Logos in Greek, and says that he is God and the creator of all created things. But who is the Word? Well, in verses 14 and 15 we read, And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glorious of the only begotten Son from the Father. John bore witness to him, and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. So the Word, whom we've already established as divine, took human flesh and lived as a human being, someone to whom John the Baptist bore witness. Several verses later, John the Baptist explicitly identifies who this person is. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. John uses the exact same phrase to describe Jesus as in verse 14. Hence, we can conclude that Jesus is the Word, and because verse 1 said that the Word was God, we can say, just from the first chapter of John's Gospel, that Jesus is God. But what about the actual words of Jesus himself? Many people do not believe in Jesus' divinity because Jesus never explicitly says the words, I am God. They are right on this point. Jesus never says those specific words. However, this is not how you would reveal yourself as God to a Jewish audience. Instead, you would use the Jewish name for God, which, if you recall from one of my previous videos, is literally, I am. In John 8, we see Jesus do exactly this. Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. This is far more than a statement of Jesus existing before Abraham. Jesus uses the present tense, meaning that he's applying the Jewish name of God to himself. This is why, immediately afterwards, the people he was speaking to try to stone him. We see Jesus do this again when he's being arrested. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to the soldiers, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Unfortunately, the English translation doesn't capture this very well. The Greek does not say, I am he. It says, I am. The synoptics also record Jesus using this phrase. In Mark's account of Jesus' trial, we read, Again, the high priest asked Jesus, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. This is the statement that gets him condemned by the Sanhedrin. They understood that when he said, I am, that he was claiming divinity. Also, note how Jesus uses the term Son of Man to describe himself. To modern readers, this doesn't sound like anything special, but an ancient Jewish audience would have immediately thought of this passage from the book of Daniel. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. The Son of Man is someone who is served by all nations and rules an eternal kingdom. This is clearly a divine figure. Also, the fact that this reference is found in what most skeptical scholars believe is the earliest gospel completely destroys the idea that Jesus' divinity was a later development. So, Jesus claims to be God in the gospels, and we have established that the gospels are the most reliable sources we have about Jesus' life. 
What are we to make of this? C.S. Lewis famously said that if Jesus really said these words, there are only three possibilities. Either he was lying, he was crazy, or he was telling the truth. If he was lying, then he ought to be maligned as one of the worst people who ever lived. If he was crazy, then we ought to pity him and all of his followers. If, on the other hand, he was telling the truth, then we ought to fall at his feet and worship him. In Chapter 8 of The Case for Christ, Lee Strobel interviews psychologist Gary Collins, and the information in that chapter effectively rules out the second possibility, that Jesus was crazy. So we're left with two options. He was lying, or he was telling the truth. How do we determine which option is correct? Well, Jesus himself told us how we would know whether he is who he says he is. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This is important because, contrary to popular belief, the book of Jonah strongly implies that Jonah was dead in the whale, and then that God raised him up. Similarly, Jesus says that he will be dead for three days, and then will be raised up. Jesus' words will be vindicated or falsified based on whether or not he rises from the dead after three days. And that is what we will talk about next time. Thank you all, and God bless.